Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, welcome back to my booktube channel. We basically just talk about anything book related here. I just I love stories, uh, mostly mostly fiction stories. I do discuss nonfiction once in a while. Uh, and mostly I do book reviews. And a lot of the times I do book reviews for just some of my indie writing friends. But I also love to do traditionally published authors too because I just I just love books. So that's what we do here, in case you're new to the channel. If you're not new to the channel, then this might be an interesting one for you because I'm, I'm typically doing the book reviews with today. No, I've been reading a lot of independent books and I've come across something that is easily my biggest pet peeve in indie publishing. And I'll get to it in just a few seconds. But first, I'd like to plug my novel, Corpse Lily. It's coming out this fall. So right now it's the middle of September. It's in production stage. They're getting a cover ready. The ARC is finally ready, and it's going to be coming out very soon. So I will be in touch with you guys on that. If you haven't yet subscribed to my newsletter, I'll be putting a link to that below. There is a copy of my story on there called The Writer. So it's a little freebie I'm putting out there. So you won't just be subscribing for the sake of getting bombarded with emails. You'll be subscribing to get a free story in there as well. And, of course, you can just unsubscribe anytime you're sick and tired of hearing me send you an email once in a while because now that the book's coming out I want you guys to know about it I want to know what you think of my work instead of just me telling you what I think of everyone else's work with that said please don't forget to like subscribe and hang in there before today's episode okay as I said Today I'm going to be discussing my biggest pet peeve in indie publishing. <laughs> and that is, half the time I'm reading an independent published novel, I don't have the slightest clue who's talking. So when you're doing dialogue, there's a lot of different things that you can do, a lot of little tricks that I barely ever see in traditional publishing. And I'd like to see much less of it in the indie world because I do try to support my friends. But it's not fair that I'm buying books and trying to support my pals and putting all this time reading and having to go back and reread several paragraphs, sometimes even a, a page or two, so I can see which character is talking to me. So that's what we're going to address today. And I'm going to come up with a couple examples. And then I'm going to show you a couple examples in some traditionally published novels that I liked and how you rarely ever see this, but what can be done to prevent this issue. So let's start off with the first example. I'm not going to tell you who who writes these books because I'm critiquing them and I don't want to do that to people who are on the same level as me. We're all trying to put our work out there and we're all trying to get better at this. So I'm not trying to call anyone out, but I am hoping that someone will also point out mistakes to me on my road to becoming traditionally published and successful at this. So the very first example, it's time to go, Megan. You've held on long enough. It's time to let go, he says to me. There's a couple issues with this. Now, I didn't go back into the first paragraphs, but I had trouble reading this because I had no idea who was speaking. I knew they were speaking to Megan, but I had no idea who it was. I actually thought it was the other friend saying this, but uh, a female friend. Then when I read back, I realized it was her guy friend that was speaking. Instead, I changed it to maybe help identify what the issue would be to, it's time to go. He says to me, you've held on long enough. It's time to let go. Using Megan and he says to me is redundant. All right, get to the point inside the first sentence. So the reader, me, knows one, who is talking and two, who they're talking to. Because as you can see, when I rewrote it, I took out the word Megan. It's time to go instead of it's time to go Megan. And then instead of keeping on going and writing, he says at the very end of the paragraph, I write it after the very first sentence. So that cleaned it up quite a bit, and when I, when I did that in my head, I was able to identify who the hell was speaking. The second example I have for you folks is, hmm, indeed, someone uses invisibility cloak to come after us. It may well be okay, but I'd rather be cautious. Let's find a better hiding place to uncover their proper identity before we show ourselves, she says. So... As you can see, I had to read several sentences before I even had the slightest clue who was talking. Right after the very first sentence, you put the dialogue tag. So it would read this. Indeed, she says, someone uses invisibility cloak to come after us. It may well be okay, but I'd rather be cautious. Let's find a better hiding place to uncover their proper identity before we show ourselves. So right away, 
Hmm, indeed, she says. So now automatically, before I even continue reading, I know who the hell's talking to me. So that's one way to fix it. Another way to fix it, so we're going to go to Paula Quelua, a big favorite on this channel. If you're familiar with the channel, I review him a lot. My fiancé and I just love him. I didn't even have to go far to find, because he, he does this all the time. It's true, I said. Why else do you think I asked you to breathe deeply and to raise your arms? And it, it keeps going on and on and on. But if Mr. Quelo decided to put the dialogue tag right down here, I'd have this entire block here that I'd have to read before I found out who the hell was speaking. And that's just not fair to someone who took the time to buy your book and to read it. Look at this. I just flipped to a random page. Well, said one of the actresses timidly. All right. Now we're going to go to the next page. Does anyone want to say anything? And then right after that first sentence, it doesn't have a dialogue tag where it says he said, she said. But does anyone want to say anything? Her voice sounded fragile, tremulous, and she had still not uncovered her face. So we get a little bit of description while also making sure that the reader knows who the hell's talking. Now, maybe, maybe the independent writer was trying to get away with having this huge block and they don't want to distract the reader by, and so they decide to leave the dialogue tag at the end. Another way you can avoid that is by making it certain who is speaking in the previous paragraph. There's a few different tricks that you can do for that. Here, I decided to check out one another favorite on this station, Richard Lehman. I love him. I talk about him all the time. He's pretty much the reason I started writing. So he does this crazy thing. I don't know if you can see that, but he does these long things in just about every one of his novels where it's just it's just a long string of dialogue and the very first one as long as there's only two people talking the very very first one needs the dialogue tag afterwards it's just conversation and you can follow it freely so you were really lucky I whispered I don't feel so lucky I just nicked you it hurts like crazy you're lucky you aren't dead I feel like I've got the worst hangover in history. Must have been the beer. So even though he doesn't say he said, she said at all in any of those conversation pieces, we know exactly who's speaking because he identifies who's speaking in that very first sentence and then we can carry on throughout the conversation. I also want to talk about The Sky in the Forest by C.S. Forrester, mostly because it's just a beautiful, beautiful book and I want to at least pull it out and show it off a little bit. I love this novel but also because it points out the first thing I had said about just making sure that after the very first sentence you identify who's speaking because it helps so much and in this book there's so many people because it takes place in a village in Africa so there's just so many people involved in this novel you really want to know who the hell's speaking we might get more fish he said you like fish you could walk along the bank while I paddle down the river there might be other rivers to cross we might we might even cross the big river. So if they had left that dialogue tag at the end there, I would have read all that stuff not knowing who the hell was talking, and I would have lost out really on all that beautiful dialogue because I would have been too busy thinking about, well, who the hell's saying this to actually enjoy the story. So that's basically it for this episode, and I hope that some of my indie writer friends can use some of this to help them with their dialogue tags and to help them identify who the hell's speaking because if you're anything like me, it's a big problem, and it just needs to be avoided because us readers, we'd sure appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning into my station. I love the hell out of you for it, and we'll see you next time.